Well, hello there and welcome to another Dice Vlog. Today is Tuesday. That's that can't be right. I think the clock's wrong. Today's probably Monday. And today I'll be talking about stuff leading up to MSI, all the things around it, what we're gonna do about it, and you know, popular opinion and just the clear up some things because I haven't done a vlog in a long time and um, you know we didn't really do as what we expected to do and you guys deserve at least some answers so this is the vlog to say that um, so scrims leading up to MSI um, before even scrimming before MSI there's playoffs for NA where we would beat C9 and, or I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. We played against C9 and TL and scrims and did really well. Then we played against TIP and then we beat TIP. Then we played against TL and TIP and then we did really badly in scrims, but then we beat C9. And then after that, we played against C9 and CLG who are both having you know, roster changes or like, let's say CLG hasn't played for a while because they're out of it. Um, and then C9, they're trying to figure out the new middle. And so we're playing against them. And then when we finally got to MSI, we had the opportunity to play against some teams. I don't know what I should even be saying for that. But basically, the first day there, things went pretty well. Um, we felt like, you know... We were in a good position to like win it or just do well in general. And um, so first day, um, nothing really happens. We just play some scrims. And the next day of scrims, something goes wrong, start tilting. And then we go into the games and basically got stomped every single game and for the first game, I guess basically too long did it read. We just, uh, hmm. I'm not sure how to explain it, honestly, but let's just say things didn't go as planned and we didn't do everything we should have been doing and we, we didn't, we weren't able to translate scrims on stage and we also weren't able to like you know keep a level head I think that as a team we panicked a little bit and we just you know we just couldn't we just couldn't perform on stage for whatever reason and I guess that doesn't really say much though <laughs> um so I, this comes to the subject of tilting then um, for me as a player, in the games that I played, I didn't really tilt until like the last day. I I was in an okay mindset for the first day, even though it looked really bad. My mindset was still fine, but I did tilt a little bit in scrimmages because I'm playing against really, really good top laners and... What that means is that it takes a lot more of my mentality to be able to like, or my tolerance to be able to like play against them properly and then do my job properly. Like it's just more strain because against the best, they're going to apply more pressure, which means you're not going to be able to do what you want all the time. And then that slowly, you know, put me on tilt. Um, it was a slow snowball of um, my first games against you know, the best were fine because, you know, I I wasn't really expecting anything. I was just, like, playing my own game. And then as I played against them, I realized, like, the small difference in, like, um, maybe you missed the last hit or maybe, uh, maybe did a roam better or warded better. And then it became the process of just, like, copying all the right things that I should be doing and... Um, for me, everything just kind of got messed up and it interfered with my way of thinking of how I played. It got in the way of, uh, well, it's not why, but for communication, it got 
pretty rough because if I'm on tilt, I won't talk as much, which is really bad because as a top player, you need to talk to your team. And that's something leading up to the next subject of communication and tilting goes hand in hand for me. So when you guys have this popular opinion of like, oh, Darius can't even play league, like you don't even get any help or anything, the popular opinion of like, he's doing all he can, he's just getting dived, there's nothing he can do, he's just, you know, just having a bad time. That's not that's not true at all. Honestly, like, if I just communicate, like, what I want to Santorin or Lust Boy, then there's nothing, there's just no problem in the first place. Because... In reality, if I ask for something from them, it's not like they're going to be like, no, you can't have this. I won't save you from this. For example, when I played the NAR versus Casio matchup where it was just really a really bad matchup and there's a wave building, I could have been like, hey, Santorin, there's a wave building at my tower. I need you behind me. And, you know, something as simple as that, although it, it, does, it sounds simple, but it's a lot harder to... <laughs> to pull off on stage. I mean, even though I should be able to, like I should be able to just say, you should come and you know help me catch this wave. Cause if you don't, and I get tower dove, their jungler's gonna get first blood and they're gonna snowball the game, you know, something like that. So that's not something you can like blame anyone on my team for, except me for not being able to communicate that. And in the end, it all relies on me. Like, all this circle jerk stuff about, um, you know, just not giving me stuff. Like, it's it's a team effort. It's not just one person. And there's just so many factors that I can't really get into and explain about, but I just... Hope that gives you guys some kind of idea. Um, so looking to the future to fix this kind of stuff is... Um, there's always this downward spiral of, for how I play as a player, whereas it just gets even more and more passive. Whereas there ha has been times where I have played Rumble, I have played Aurelia. It's not like my mechanics are like, terrible on those champions and impossible it's mostly about communication it's mostly about like you know asking for stuff just simple asking like and on top of that not only blindly asking like i need a gank top instead of saying i need a gank top i would be like i need a gank top in this time through lane in this area we're gonna play it like this you know like simple stuff like that um it isn't necessarily that I'm not talking, it's just the way that I'm saying it is just incorrect, usually. And that's something I'm going to be looking forward to fix. Um, there's, there's a lot of things to fix, but we're just going to... We're just going to work hard and like endure the pain of like going through these different styles of play and eventually we'll have it ready by worlds or you know at the end of summer split at least um so the next thing is uh how i feel as a player um right now i feel like i'm doing an okay job but even though it doesn't look like it I feel like um, I've tried my best to not tilt and and uh, just, well, I guess that's all I can do. I don't know. Um, I guess to give you guys some insight on how I feel about myself is that, like, I'm down on myself, but I'm not like as down as people think. Like people think I might be on suicide watch or something. You know, I mean it it sucks, but I've been through a lot worse. And the reason why it hurts so much is because there's so many like good fans that gives such good support and 
Um, you know, it's not the people that hate me that really hurt me that much. It's the ones that, like, the people that care so much about me as fans, and, you know, I'm letting them down. That That's what, you know, makes it disappointing for me and a little bit painful because I want to be able to show you guys that, you know, I'm... I'm a pretty good top planer. And when usually at these events when we lose, it's usually like I feel like I if I did well, I wouldn't feel as bad. But this time around like I just felt like I couldn't do anything and the the fix behind that is, you know, just taking it to the next step and just working on my communication. Because your mechanics will only take you so far, and my mechanics aren't even, like, top-notch. Um, improving my communication will probably, like, do a lot for myself. Because right now it's just really, really inconsistent. People say I may be a consistent player from, like, a spectator point of view. But in reality, it's I'm actually a really, really inconsistent player. There's times where I can be really, really godly, and there's times where I can just be a complete scrub, like really, really bad. And that also comes with tilting too, so like just all these factors. Um, so how I feel about the thoughts around me, I didn't really read that much social media, but in the end, I can only blame myself for what's happened. Like, once again, it's a team game. And I don't need anyone to be, like, you know, to stand up for me on social media. Like, you guys don't really have to. And I'd actually appreciate if you guys just leave it alone because it just becomes this vicious hurricane of this shit storm of people being like, Dyrus is not bad. Dyrus is bad. Bench Dyrus. I don't know why Dyrus does this. Why, why, why did they not help Darius? You know, like this, all this like shit. People are just trying to figure it out, figure it out, and they just don't know what it is. So it just like goes in the circle of like pointless, non-productivity, and it's just really. I mean, you can do whatever you want. It's just I, I just wouldn't want to like see it in general. I'm not telling you to not do it. I'm just. Like, I just, you know, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, whatever. You, you guys can do whatever you want, but I would prefer that it would just be a normal thing. Because the thing is, when you guys do that, it just brings more conflict, actually. Because then people are like, uh, you're so full of shit, you're just a direst fan. He could feed 0 and 20, and you still love him, you know? Like, I don't know. Anyways, moving on. Um, I think that wraps up about most of it. I probably missed a couple of things, but basically, too long to read. Um, our scrims leading up to MSI were kind of like meh, and then our scrims at MSI were good and then turned really bad. And then tilting happened, all combined with that, which combined with communication, which all ties into that. And then the love hick circle jerk is like, it's like, whatever, just leave them alone. And we're going to fix my problems that I have. And I'm going to work on it. And if I'm unable to do it, then, you know, I just have to try my best. That's all I can do. And... I guess my message to you guys is that I really, really appreciate all the support and I'm really happy to have such good fans and I hope everyone supports TSM as much as they do now in our journey to Summer Split and Worlds. So that's it for this vlog. It was just a big, it was just a bunch of uh, random thoughts, but Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on stream. Bye.